The main theme of my research has been focused on musculoskeletal physiotherapy and in particular it's focused on low back pain. What I've been very interested in is looking at the efficacy of treatments but in particular uh, exercise as a treatment for low back pain and I've carried out and been part of around four quite large randomised controlled trials in this particular area. The value of the research that we're doing is that it is designed to underpin the work of the allied health professions, both in the National Health Service but also in private practice. We've also done some work to underpin the practice of osteopaths. We've carried out um, a number of pieces of work. Some of them are related to randomised controlled trials, some of them have been qualitative studies, but more and more we're moving into mixed methods. And a mixed methods design in research really ensures that at the end of the research study you have fewer questions left to answer. A doctoral student approached us. He wanted to study here specifically at the University of Brighton because he'd heard about our musculoskeletal research areas. And he came from Hong Kong. My project was on the multimodal physiotherapy program development for patients suffered from nasopharyngeal carcinoma post radiotherapy. He arrived uh, in the UK determined that he wanted to do a randomised controlled trial and one of the first questions I asked him was why. Educate and challenge me um, was, was the uh, main value of the study was that okay, true to the patient's needs. So well, I changed uh, the study topic okay, from a, a randomised controlled study to see how patients uh, really benefit from our treatment. Okay, this kind of patients usually uh, suffer a lot of socio-economic okay, problems because they are usually the bad winners in, the, in their homes. So if we treat them properly or they receive a good treatment, then probably they could return to their productive world um, as much as possible and as early as possible as well. We actually developed an educational package which was then piloted with a group of patients in Hong Kong and was then uh, formulated into a total intervention plan. So that's the package to be used by Office of Therapists in Hong Kong. Your culture here alert me of the patient's sentiments and I need to respect the patient's needs as well. So okay, the culture, the teaching and the learning here really enrich my um, patient and interactions. One of the things that I've been very keen to do over the last 15 years is to actually enable health professionals, particularly physiotherapists and latterly osteopaths, to actually collect data of very high quality. And we've done this through a series of developments which we would call standardised data collection. And the physiotherapy standardised data collection tools have been developed for use in NHS practice but also in private practice. There are so many ways that, that Anne-Moore has, research has, has started to make us think differently and has changed our perception of where we can go with this. The tool is now being used nationally for a series of snapshot surveys and the Physio First Association I think have found this of great benefit in terms of creating data which supports their tendering processes. It is very important that we get the information out to practitioners in a way that is user-friendly and it's about getting reports that are of a reasonable size for them to digest in day-to-day -day practice. One of the contributions that we've made uh, from the University of Brighton, I think, to building capacity and capability within the physiotherapy profession has been the formulation of the National Physiotherapy Research Network. I think Anne has shown tremendous leadership. I recall when I came into post that she was one of the first people who came to see me. Interestingly, she wasn't coming to ask for money. She wasn't coming actually to ask for anything for the network. It was what the network could offer me. So we are, in the next few months, going to move to renaming the grouping as the Allied Health Professions Research Network. And we see this as being a very positive move because it means that the allied health professions will be working together much more in terms of research activities, but also it's a good economical 
move in terms of capitalising on the resources that there are available. It is absolutely imperative that everything that we deliver in the health service is um, both evidence-based, is best practice, is the most effective and efficient um, treatments, interventions that we can possibly deliver. And research enables us to make sure that what the allied health professions are delivering is all of those things. It's also important in order to stimulate innovation.